the world didn't end, the dead rose again, and the Celtic Warriors go into WrestleMania. This is PWS, Phil's Wrestling Show, fella! Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 4 of PWS, Phil's Wrestling Show. This week I'll be covering all the wrestling, and of course, the Royal Rumble, we'll see how I did on predictions. And uh, two more fig reviews, Battle Packs, Miz vs. Alex Riley, and Basic 13, Ezekiel Jackson. Let's get things kicked off with my thoughts on this year's Royal Rumble. Alright, now last week on the show, I gave you guys my Royal Rumble predictions. So let's see how I did, and I'll give you my thoughts on the show as we go along. Um, in the interest of keeping things a little shorter on the show, I'm not going to be covering every single segment on every show. Uh, just to bring the show uh, total time down a little bit. So things are a little more streamlined now. Um, of course, uh, we kick things off at the Royal Rumble with uh, the World Heavyweight Championship, which was a little bit of, su of a surprise. Uh, uh, I think Mark Henry's recent injury is uh, probably a, a big reason why that was the kickoff and why it was a little shorter, or at least it felt short to me. Uh, but still a good match. Um, they didn't. Uh, I predicted that uh, they were going to send Daniel Bryan right through the cage to give him the win, but they actually gave him a pretty strong victory here. Um, he used his smarts to uh, wait till Big Show knocked out Mark Henry, and then of course he ran over the top of the cage, and we got a pretty uh, a cool extended sequence of Daniel Bryan getting out of the cage and Big Show trying to stop him, even uh, having Big Show holding Daniel Bryan's whole weight just by the one arm over the cage. Um, it was pretty. It was a pretty impressive ending, and like I said, it uh, that uh, really did a good job of uh, making look. Daniel Bryan looked strong. Uh, I thought they were going to give him a real cheap victory just so he could continue his cowardly run, but uh, that was a pretty strong victory overall. I mean, you can't really complain with escaping the cage over those two. Um, we got the start of Rock vs. Cena promos, and uh, the first uh, that we got was a John Cena video. And while it was very well done, I did feel it does feel very long. I mean, it, it's only a five-minute video, but it feels like a ten-minute video. And uh, compared to The Rock's video, which was a, a much more enjoyable to uh, to watch, um, they should really uh, do something new with John Cena's video. Uh, like I said, it almost felt like a chore to sit through. But then again, I watch all WWE, so of course, it's just like pounding me over the head with stuff I already know in the Cena video. At least the Rock, I felt the Rock's video was more entertaining to sit through. Uh, we got a bonus Divas match. Uh, it was good to see everybody get used. I uh, really hate when they have a 10 Diva tag and only two people wrestle. So it was good to see at least everybody get in there and uh, have a chance in the match. Um, of course, it was. I was glad to see Beth Phoenix pick up the win. Um, and I understand uh, for whatever reason, I don't know if it was from the, the bruise... Uh, from uh, Alicia Fox or anything like that, but Beth Phoenix been off TV for feels like a month or two, and I understand you need to reestablish her since she they didn't take the title from her. They let her be Divas Champion throughout that time, uh, but everybody pretty much knows Beth Phoenix is very very dominant, and I don't know that having her do minute squash matches after this uh, it really needs to be done. Uh, everybody knows Beth Phoenix is pretty much the top dog in the Divas division. I don't fully think we need a new storyline where she squashes people in two minutes to do that. Uh, that wasn't the case in this match, but it was certainly the case Monday on Raw. Um, and then, of course, 
one of the biggest matches on the pay-per-view, uh, aside from the Rumble match itself, was John Cena versus Kane. Um, I predicted uh, and suggested that uh, do not have Kane lose this match in a typical Super Cena fashion, and you'd have a chance to do something really special. And uh, that's kind of what we got. Um, these two started off at a real manic, fast pace, uh, just putting like pretty much their whole move sets out there. And I really appreciated that. It was a real, you know, made it feel like they were two even, uh, pretty much super beings in wrestling. Just going at, I mean, they threw the kitchen sink at each other, and uh, nothing would get the job done. Uh, it was really an entertaining brawl, uh, you know, a bit above uh, what I expected. Uh, showed both men as like really indestructible. Uh, like I said, they were just hitting each other with everything, pretty much everything but their finishers uh, in this one. Um, and then, as I feared, uh, if you remember back to last week, I said there might be a potential for some uh, over the top silliness where Kane perhaps tries to destroy John Cena. Um, we didn't get that, fortunately, but unfortunately, we got. Um, an injured Zack Ryder being wheeled into a room backstage by Eve. And after the Cena and Kane match, Kane, of course, went back there after uh, knocking out John Cena and dragged Kane all the way back out. Uh, gave him a tombstone in front of Eve. Uh, and John Cena tried to come and save him, but he got chokeslammed too. So, in a way, uh, in the, overall in the night, it was a Kane victory. Uh, it was, I was glad they didn't have Cena run over Kane. And uh, this gives us a whole n opportunity for a big, huge match at Elimination Chamber to wrap this whole thing up. Uh, so overall, not too far from my prediction, um, and with a lot less silliness. Uh, we got a bonus match also on the World Rumble of Brodus Clay versus Drew McIntyre. Personally, just happy to see both these guys get a spotlight on a major pay-per-view like this. Um, I'm sure uh, a lot of people, including myself, wondered why the fuck we were getting a uh, never-ending John Cena video during the Royal Rumble. Uh, you gotta understand that no matter how many times WWE tells you SummerSlam is the second biggest event, uh, pretty much just as many eyes are on the Royal Rumble. So that's why they gotta get uh, all their big promotion going at the Royal Rumble. So yes, it was a chore to sit through, but Royal Rumble is where they showcase uh, pretty much everything new and up and coming for Wrestlemania and pretty much the year so seeing Drew and Brodus on there is actually a good thing even if Drew just basically got uh, run over uh, we also got a rock uh, video for Wrestlemania and um, like I said before it was much uh, much more enjoyable to sit through than uh, John Cena's video uh, hopefully they will beat us over the head with these same videos all the way to Wrestlemania uh, but either way, uh, like every WWE uh, video package, they're both well done. I just enjoyed The Rocks one much more. CM Punk defended the title against Dolph Ziggler at the Royal Rumble. And uh, this is the one that had the most variables for me. Uh, but they, they, they went with the pretty smart route. Um, I think it was a good decision to have John Laurinaitis be the outside referee. Um... As I mentioned in my predictions last week, I was really hoping that Laurinaitis being in ring wouldn't uh, wouldn't interfere with the great match that I know Dolph Ziggler and CM Punk had, and uh, that's what they did. They kept Laurinaitis out to the side, and they let uh, CM Punk and Dolph Ziggler do what they do in the ring. Uh, I thought uh, Laurinaitis' spots were well done, uh, checking on the referee instead of counting CM Punk's pin. You know, anything he could do to pr maintain his job but while still letting uh, Dolph Ziggler and CM Punk do what they do best. Um, the events from this, of course, would bring many uh, interesting things on Raw, but I'll get to that in uh, Raw Thoughts. And then, of course, we have the Royal Rumble match itself. Uh, I was glad uh, to see The Miz and Cody Rhodes get a nice, good uh, performance in this. I predicted last week that this was going to be a career performance for The Miz and, and a Royal Rumble, and it certainly was, uh, lasting uh, over 45 minutes in the Rumble. That's a great job for The Miz. I think it'll earn him a lot of credibility with people who might still be on the fence with him. Uh, I personally wasn't fully a fan of his when he first came around as the Diva Search host, and of course, 
before that from Tough Enough. Um, but uh, he's really earned my respect over all the years, and uh, I've actually been a big fan of his the last couple of years. So it was good to see him get one of those big Rumble performances out there. Uh, then, of course, we had some silliness in the match, too. Uh, we had a spot where uh, Santino Marella and Mick Foley got into it in a snake versus sna sock match. Uh, some people loved it. Some people hated it. I thought it was silly and harmless. doesn't really hurt anything. It was pre uh, pretty hilarious, in my opinion. Uh, I was, some little things I love. Uh, Chris Jericho, of course, was in the Rumble. And even though nothing has been mentioned of it since his return, originally the reason he, or the storyline that got him off TV was getting punted in the head by Randy Orton. And what I love so much about this was Jericho was the one to eliminate Randy Orton. So even though we won't get anything significant probably between the two of them this year, their beef has already been taken care of because Jericho tossed his ass out of the rubble. And it's little things like that I really love about Jericho. He always makes sure there's his continuity throughout all the storylines continues and he refuses to let anything uh, get slipped by. Uh, we had a few surprise entrants in the Rumble, of course. Uh, but probably my favorite out of all of them was the road dog, Jesse James. Uh, what a great run he had in the Rumble. Got a great reaction from the crowd. Uh, went through his whole... Uh, his version of the five moves of doom, which every wrestler has, by the way. Don't shit on any wrestler. They all have the five moves of doom. Um, and man, he just really had the crowd rocking and uh, the shimmy knee and all, everything. It was just, you know, like, I don't know that he should come back full time as a wrestler, but they should definitely utilize him more. Um, it wouldn't be too bad. And of course, we had the return of Karma. It was great to see her after all these months. Um, and of course, how could I not like it? She pretty much was solely responsible for the elimination of Michael Cole, uh, which was a terrible waste of a spot in the Rumble. Uh, I was actually expecting Booker T to be the one who entered the Rumble from the announce team, but it turns out all three announcers ended up uh, going into the Rumble. Uh, I could see where people, that would not be their cup of tea. Um, personally, I don't mind Booker T, and of course, Jerry Lawler and Michael Cole are certainly a waste overall in the Royal Rumble match, but still could be entertaining overall. It wasn't too, too bad. Uh, and unfortunately, we got a return from the Great Khali, who, uh, we should probably send Great Khali back in time to the Hogan era, where he would actually matter, and maybe we could get Andre back or something. So, future people, if you see this, can you do that for us? Thank you. Uh, what the fuck with no cane? 13 consecutive Royal Rumble matches, and on the 14th, they just say no, uh, just no Kane. I mean, even if he wasn't in, even if he went in and John Cena h helped eliminate him or something, it would have been good. But why the fuck would you not have him in there? Is it because 13, you don't want to, you know, he was in 13 Rumbles. Oh, 13, unlucky number. Woo! Woo! Uh, I don't know, but I thought it was very stupid to not have Kane in the Royal Rumble match. I mean, he's one of the biggest stat holders in Royal Rumble history. You'd think you'd put him in there, but... In my in my opinion, that was probably the biggest mistake of the Royal Rumble match, was not having Kane in there. Uh, then, of course, came my prediction. It would either be the Celtic Warrior Sheamus, or the one and only Y2J Chris Jericho. And wouldn't you know it, that those were the last two? Yes, thank you. I am great. No, nope, no, nope. hold your applause till the end of the show. I fucking nailed it. So, of course, I was completely marking out Jericho and Sheamus at the end. And at this point, I didn't really think of a shit who won. I was just happy it was my two guys that I picked. And, uh, of course, the Celtic warrior Sheamus is going to WrestleMania. Uh, him and Chris Jericho pretty much at the end had a mini one-on-one -on -one, uh, rumble match uh, after the uh, other two guys were eliminated. And it was a really good uh, back and forth trying to get each other eliminated. But uh, Sheamus picked up the win with the bro kick and uh, made my prediction come true. He is the 2012 Raw Rumble winner. Overall, I really enjoyed this uh, whole Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Uh, I thought it was really well done. Uh, 
uh, really, other than John Cena's video, and perhaps, I mean, even the Divas match wasn't, you know, was actually not too bad this time around. I, of course, I would have preferred perhaps just Eve versus Beth Phoenix, um, but overall, great pay-per-view. If you haven't seen it, pick up the DVD in a few weeks, and when we come back, figure review, Riley and Miz. Alright guys, figure review of Miz vs. Alex Riley Battle Packs. Uh, the Miz is, uh, not anything too new. He's got his original Angry Scan. Um, a lot of people saying this is a re-release, but this is actually slightly different because, uh, it's more of a pinkish red than the original, uh, red one that came out. Uh, but overall, not a huge difference. Um, if you don't have a Miz figure, it's a good one to get. Uh, these packs are about $20, uh, pretty much wherever figures are sold. Just depends if your store gets them in. Uh, this is, of course, Alex Riley's uh, debut figure. I thought they did a good job on the scan and the attire. I uh, got his A-Ry logo on the boots there, and Riley on the back. Uh, of course, they gave him the briefcase that Miz carried the WWE Championship around in. Uh, nothing inside there. Uh, again, the scan's pretty good. Uh, the only thing I can really knock on this figure is that I think the body should be a bit bigger. He's a bit bigger than the Miz. Uh, but overall, this is a really cool set if you like Riley, and uh, you get an okay Miz figure along with it. As always, the WWE followed up their huge pay-per-view, the Royal Rumble, with Monday Night Raw. Let's take a look at my thoughts on this past Monday's Raw, January 30th, 2012. So after a huge pay-per-view the night before, of course, as always, we got Monday Night Raw. Now, of course, the biggest thing on the show was set up last week, and that was John Laurinaitis' uh, job evaluation by Triple H. And, of course, everybody was just ready for this boring son of a bitch to get the fucking boot from the game. Uh, let's see what happened on the show. Uh, Ace was doing everything. And by Ace, I mean Johnny Ace, which was John Laurinaitis' wrestling name. So sometimes you just hear me refer to him as Ace. But uh, Laurinaitis was doing everything to save his goddamn job. He came out of the top of the show slapping every hand around ringside, shaking hands with King and Lola. This motherfucker was shucking and jiving trying to keep his job. Uh, but of course CM Punk didn't let his uh, little rant go on for too long which of course we got a, a, a Laurinaitis fuck up of epic proportions in the elimination PPV uh, just really terrible Th of all the things to fuck up you fuck up the name in the next pay per view you know like could you fuck up something that's not important Jesus uh, but of course CM Punk was right there uh, to come out and uh, start chopping down uh, poor Johnny Laurinaitis with the na 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 song and just cutting them down, letting them know that uh, the end is nigh for you, Laurinaitis. <laughs> and uh, I really love John Laurinaitis trying to shake hands with CM Punk. I mean, Jesus Christ, even Vince didn't bother trying to shake Stone Cold's hand. So uh, I always get a kick out of little things like that. Like Laurinaitis is so delusional. He's the kid. He can. He just still tries to like, smooth things over with Punk, even though Punk is already giving him go to sleep and everything else. Uh, and of course, the best thing we got out of that whole first segment was CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan match getting set up. What a great match! Uh, I, I certainly don't always agree with uh, such a little build up to a match like that. Obviously, they just announced it off the top of the show, but. Because this is the Raw Rumble follow-up show, I think it was an excellent time if you're going to do something like that. Because a lot, a lot, a lot of eyes are on that Monday Night Raw. Because everybody's not shucking $45 for the Rumble. So they're going to watch Raw, and it, this is the Raw to put some big shit on if you're going to do that. Um, now that Randy Orton is back from injury, of course, we get our mandatory... Uh, once a month Randy Orton versus Dolph Ziggler match. Now don't misunderstand me. 
It's always a good match. But, uh, keep that in the back of your mind. As, <coughs> pardon me. As the months roll on, keep an eye on Monday Night Raw. Because it's a pretty much a guarantee that once a month, Randy Orton will face Dolph Ziggler. And, uh, during that match, uh, Wade Barrett was up in a skybox uh, giving commentary. Uh, that was kind of a unique and cool way to do the commentary, having uh, the other superstar be away somewhere uh, with, a, with a third announcer asking him questions during the match. It was uh, pretty interesting, and I hope we, we get a little more uh, like that. It was really interesting. Uh, what I liked the most, though, was Wade Barrett saying that uh, he should have went down the flight of stairs when he uh, originally injured Randy Orton and should have thrown him down not one, not two, but three more flights of stairs just to make sure. Uh, that's what I love about Wade Barrett. He always uh, he always has something interesting to say, always has something uh, entertaining to say, even though he is a, he is a heel. Um, and, of course, it's always vicious. Uh, you know, like I said, wanting to throw Randy Orton down three more flights of stairs. What an asshole. Uh, we got more of Ace going around backstage, and of course, uh, he bumped into the uh, one and only William Regal, and uh, he started asking about his kids, and William Regal was uh, very saddened to inform us that he has conjoined twins that he keeps in the attic, and they don't get out too much. Uh, William Regal, much like Wade Barrett, is always good for a hilarious and dark line like that. Uh, I really believe William Regal uh, should be the third Mike on Raw, much like Booker T is on SmackDown. He would add a lot to the program. Uh, as much as I like Jerry the King Lawler, I still cannot... I really don't like the team of Lawler and Cole on Raw. Uh, but I think William Regal would inject uh, his own brand of comedy and break up the monotony of Cole and Miz. So, WWE, could you do that for me? And of course, the actual match itself between Daniel Bryan and CM Punk, what a great wrestling match. Uh, I hope these two get an opportunity on a pay-per-view to have a full match. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody kind of figured that we wouldn't get a clean finish with champion versus champion. I mean, they really don't like to put one guy out ahead of the other, even though it's pretty much accepted Raw is the higher brand. But I mean, this was good. It showed both guys are pretty much on the even keel. Uh, and even by the time Chris Jericho uh, ran into the match, uh, you know, it wasn't obvious that Punk was going to win, and it wasn't obvious Bryan was going to win. Punk kicked a high kick to the head of Daniel Bryan, and uh, Chris Jericho finally showed his motives. Uh, after, all, after all our time of waiting, and after he let us know last week that the Rumble would be the end of the world. Well, he lost the Rumble, so it certainly wasn't the end of the world, but, uh... He certainly wasn't afraid to bust a code breaker right on uh, CM Punk. So we didn't get any more words from Jericho, but he certainly he certainly showed that he's targeting CM Punk. Uh, if that's the deal all the way to WrestleMania, then we are in for a hell of a WrestleMania just between Rock and Cena and Punk and Jericho. So already building up to an excellent, excellent show. And. Uh, we found out this week that uh, Mike Tyson will be joined in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I personally have no problems with this. Uh, he did a, a great a job of promoting WrestleMania 14. Uh, he put in several dates through that time, uh, almost weekly on Raw. He's probably the most deserving celebrity uh, going into the Hall of Fame. Uh, certainly, up. Uh, I mean, even over a Pete Rose, who's had a few appearances, this guy actually helped WrestleMania get a huge, huge uh, buy rate. And uh, I hope he gets more chances to work with WWE in the future because he always cares. Um, he's much settled down now than, of course, he was in his boxing prime. And uh, I really don't see uh, how it could hurt anyone involved. He loves wrestling, and pretty much wrestling loves him. So I have no problem with this. Happy to see Iron Mike going into the Hall of Fame. Uh, we got a match this week between The Miz and Kofi Kingston. Now, Kofi Kingston had one hell of a moment at uh, the Royal Rumble. Uh, he actually uh, got to, was almost eliminated. Uh, he went out uh, head and arms first, but he ended up doing a handstand as The Miz tried to eliminate him and getting himself back into the match. So, of course, that led on Raw to a match between The Miz and Kofi Kingston. Uh, they had an okay match. Uh, you know, nothing to really knock about the match. But I was actually happy to see Kofi Kingston get the win. Um, now that we kind of know... 
air boom is pretty much done. Uh, even if Evanborn does come back, it's unlikely Ev uh, air boom will be reformed. But I, I think Kofi has really earned his chance at a main event singles run. He did a great job versus Randy Orton in, in that feud. Uh, I really don't see, you know, I, I understand he had a few mistakes here and there, but I thought his performance in that feud was really good. And I think 2012 should be the year they give Kobe Kingston another chance at the top. Uh, he got the win here on Miz. He looked great doing it. Uh, I really don't think he's going to win the Elimination Chamber. Uh, but uh, I think he'll have a good performance. Uh, the Chamber was announced to be Jericho, uh, of course, Punk, Miz, Kofi Kingston, R-Truth, and uh, someone else who's slipping my mind just, just at the moment. Uh, the only way I really see that going down is uh, Punk or Jericho, but I'll get to that on another show. Uh, of course, uh... On this show, they kept it reasonable, and we only got The Rock's WrestleMania preview video. Um, I thought that was a better idea. Um, more times than not, Raw fans are on the side of The Rock, and it was good to just see his video on uh, Raw. Uh, then we got an, a waste, uh, like I was talking about in the Rumble review, of Eve vs. Beth Phoenix. Now, Eve vs. Beth Phoenix is pretty much the best match you can get other than uh, Beth versus Natalia, uh, and they just completely fucking wasted it with, uh, I don't even know that it was 20 seconds of a match between, Be and Beth just ran over Eve, pretty much, and I understand they were trying to work it into Eve is, you know, distracted with Zack Ryder getting be beat up by Kane and everything, but wouldn't you have a different diva or something, it just really felt like a waste a waste of those two's abilities, even with uh, the Kane storyline. I really feel that Kane should have interrupted their match rather than just have a shitty match between Beth and uh, Eve. You know, Beth is so much better than that, and even at this point, Eve is so much better than that. Uh, and of course, uh, not exactly what I predicted uh, in the Rumble uh, episode from last week, but not too far off. Uh, I predicted that after uh, Kane would get the win at the Rumble, that perhaps we would get Cena stalking Kane. Now, thankfully, we didn't get uh, anything quite as corny as that. But uh, after Kane came out to terrorize Eve after a loss to Beth Phoenix, John Cena came out to make make the save, and he put a hell of a beat down on Kane with the steel stairs, and eventually Kane uh, got the fuck out of the arena. Uh, this was not too bad. Cena got to show his edge. It didn't drag on through the whole night like the rider tire change debacle. Uh, you know, let Cena look tough. Let Kane look tough by taking so many shots before he got the fuck out of there. And uh, we're on our way to a good match at Elimination Chamber. Uh, usually how this goes is uh, most likely going to be a last man standing match. Uh, anytime Cena starts busting the stairs on someone, that's usually the route it's going. But I have no problem with that. I think those two will put on a hell of a fucking last man standing match if that's what goes down in Elimination Chamber. And of course, uh, we got our big segment of the night. John Laurinaitis job evaluation at the hands of Triple H. And Triple H put jo Johnny Ace through the fucking ringer, I'll tell you that much. Uh, possibly threatening him with the Kiss My Ass Club. Gonna put him in gauntlet matches. I mean, Triple H was putting it on heavy on Ace. And uh, he was looking a little hot under the collar there. And just, I mean, seconds away from Laurinaitis getting the boot. When you fucking know it, The Undertaker returns. Now, I, of course, predicted this for the Rumble match itself, but uh, you gotta give me credit. I was pretty fucking close. He came out, of course. Triple H dropped the whole thing with Laurinaitis. I mean, who gives a shit then? You got the fucking biggest legend in WWE history coming down the aisle staring you right in the fucking face. Uh, Taker wanted another match at WrestleMania with uh, Triple H, even though he didn't mention it. Of course, he just looked at the WrestleMania side and looked at Triple H like, huh? Huh? You want to go one more time? Gave him the cutthroat. And Triple H didn't give a fucking shit. Gave him a little pat on the shoulder. Said, oh, he didn't say anything, but 
through his body language, he expressed that. Who cares, buddy? I already did that with you. I actually feel a little sorry for you. I'm going to leave. So we'll see how this plays out. Um, was it... Do we need to find out that he doesn't want any more to do with The Undertaker? Or is it that he's got nothing to prove? We'll have to find out in upcoming weeks. But overall, a great episode of Raw. Uh, really, Beth and Eve is the only real thing that really, really disappointed me on the show. Uh, and I can't wait to see the upcoming uh, story between Jericho and Punk. The mic work should be excellent. Um, even though I can see why some people wouldn't want another Triple H vs. Undertaker match, uh, you can't deny that two previous WrestleMania matches are pretty fucking great. Uh, so if that does go down again, I hope it's not Undertaker's last. And uh, I can't wait to see how Undertaker lures Triple H into that match. So, overall, a great Raw. We come back. TNA, Impact Thoughts. Now available on eBay. Click the link in the description. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Tina Impact filmed for the first time in London, England this week, so let's take a look at my thoughts on TNA Impact. TNA Impact from February 2nd, 2012. Alright, uh, TNA was in London for the first time to even impact. Um, right off the top we got uh, Bobby Roode and Bully Ray and Ring doing a promo and what a great heel team these two are. I mean, uh, they're kind of like a mishmash together. Um, I thought Immortal was done, but uh, Mike Tanay insisted later on in the show that Eric Bischoff and uh, Gunner were part of Immortal. Uh, is that really it? Is that the whole Immortal group? Is Gunner and Eric Bischoff? Because Bully Ray is teaming up with Bobby Roode, so it's not looking like he's a part of Immortal. So right now, Immortal is pretty fucking pathetic, in my opinion. But, uh, Roode and Bully Ray. Now that's a fucking group you can get into, because those two are fucking hilarious with each other. Ugh, calves and abs is fucking hilarious. That was a great way to start off the show. Uh, pretty much was a big mishmash. Uh, Stu, uh, Storm and uh, Storm and Sting ended up coming out too. Uh, pretty much what got set up was uh, uh, Rude for Storm versus Four Way. What a really interesting fatal four way there. I really hope to catch it. I don't always catch DNA pay per views, but I will try to find a way to see that one. Um, we got more stuff between Joe and Magnus. Uh, we got a little match. A Buckingham brawl. Now, I was thinking, you know, probably like a street fight. But no, we got some TNA fucking stupidity. Now, I've been praising TNA. They've been on a, I think they've been on a great roll since Bound, to, since Bound for Glory. I've liked the storylines. Everything's been good. And then they fucking come up with some dumb shit like this. So the rule was... That whoever won the twin, the coin toss, both members of the team get to be in the ring at the same time versus the one member who still has to tag in and out on the other side. Uh, can I just say that this is the stupidest fucking idea I've ever heard, uh, or at least one of the up there ones? Um, how the fuck are Joe and Magnus not enough to defeat one of uh, either one? Crimson or Morgan. Uh, Joe on his own is a match for either of those guys. And you're telling me two on one, they couldn't put him away, even with the partner to tag? This was just fucking stupid all the way around. And Joe and Magnus won anyway, but it should have been so much more dominant since uh, Crimson and Morgan had to tag out. Uh, I really hope we never ever see a Buckingham brawl again, because the rules are just fucking stupid. Uh, but like I said, at least Joe and Magnus won. That was good. And hopefully they'll get a run with the tag strap somewhere in the future. Uh, we got a small segment with Eric Bischoff and Garrett Bischoff. 
uh, teasing the trainer uh, reveal. And unfortunately, they were also teasing the return of Hulk Hogan. And this is where I got worried that Hogan is the trainer. Uh, but we wouldn't find out till later in the show. Uh, Austin Aries uh, versus local guy. Uh, I believe his name was Derek Haskins. Uh, they had a really good exhibition match. Uh, with a sick finish. Uh, Haskins did the shooting star press. And of course, uh, pretty much almost Brock-like. Uh, crashing face and chest first into the mat. Aries blasted him with the soccer kick right in the face. And then dumped him on his head with the brain buster. Uh, if you don't watch anything else from TNA Impact this week, try to catch that match, and specifically the end of that match. Uh, also, something else we got out of the first segment was that uh, James Storm wanted a match with Bobby Roode and with Bully Ray. And instead of a handicap match, Sting gave him two individual matches. Uh, Roode and Storm had a good match. Uh, Bully Ray cost Storm the match, which would, of course, give them something to talk about in their match later. Uh, overall, it was a good match. Uh, I wouldn't say pay-per-view quality, but pretty, pretty damn close. Pretty damn close. So if you're a fan of Storm and Rude, uh, definitely go see that one. Uh, we also got a match between Gail Kim and uh, Tara. Uh, they had a good back-and-forth contest. Uh, I'm really glad to see Tara get another push. Uh, I believe she is one of the best women's wrestlers in the world at any given time. And, uh, of course, Be uh, Gail Kim is right up there with her. Uh, it's good to see some of the top level talent going back to the TNA Women's Division, seeing as WWE does not always give those type of opportunities anymore. Um, Tara picked up the victory, which is good, of course, despite uh, anything Madison Rain could have tried. And uh, I hope she gets a, a chance with the belt, too. Uh, you know, I could see a decent back and forth feud between Gail Kim and Tara going on for a while. And if we could get Mickey James in there for a triple threat, then we'd really be in for a treat. Uh, we got the conclusion of the Hogan and Bish uh, the Bischoff and Bischoff feud. Um, well, not the end of it, but... We got the reveal that Hulk Hogan is the trainer of Garrett Bischoff. Uh, could not be more disappointed. This is the worst thing that could have happened because I was enjoying the fact that this wasn't the main storyline on the show. I was enjoying the fact that Garrett and... Eric Bischoff's feud it was something that could simmer and build its way up to something important. But instead, they just fucking throw Hogan into it, and I really can't stand Hulk Hogan in any way, shape, or form. He did a lot for this business back in the day. Cut uh, really entertaining, intense promos. Uh, he sucks a dick in the ring, and I'm sick of fucking seeing his face. Uh, I will have a story one day for you guys of... What, fully why I hate Hulk Hogan, but I really don't like that the storyline is now going to push this pretty much to the forefront of TNA, uh, possibly. Uh, I'm hoping to be proved wrong on this one. I'm hoping TNA can prove me wrong that this Eric Bischoff versus Garrett Bischoff feud will not become the top story in TNA just because Hulk Hogan's in it now. So, hopefully this... Uh, I don't see it going away anytime soon, but I'm really not pleased that you dragged the Hulkster into it. Uh, then, of course, uh, James Storm took on Bully Ray in the main event to wrap up the night's story. Uh, I thought they had a good match. I'm not really a fan of the, having a wrestler wrestle two matches in one night. I, I feel there's enough time in one wrestling program to showcase uh, many people. And to have two people, I have to have the same wrestler wrestle two matches. I mean, two decent length matches in one night. Just seems like you're rushing the storyline. Uh, like you could, you're rushing two weeks worth of story in one show. I'm not usually a fan of it, but it wasn't too bad tonight because the interference uh, Bully Ray did in the Bobby Roode vs. Storm match uh, added a little more story to the Bully Ray vs. Storm match at the end of the night. Uh, Roode uh, came to ringside to try to help Bully Ray, which of course brought out Sting and. Uh, you know, they had shenanigans and whatnot. Uh, Storm ends up picking up the win in this one, though, where he lost uh, Bobby Roode earlier. So, uh, trying to keep everybody even for the Fatal 4-Way. Uh, overall, uh, a, a not too, too bad episode of Impact. Uh, I personally don't care for the Hogan involvement in the, in the Bischoff storyline. Uh, but the Fatal 4-Way that's leading up to Against All Odds, that should be a great story. 
Um, who, who, oh, uh, Austin Aries uh, versus Alex Shelley coming up for the pay-per-view. We didn't get anything from Alex Shelley on this episode, uh, but uh, that should be a great match for the pay-per-view, of course. And, of course, uh, Tara getting a title shot at the pay-per-view should be good, too. Uh, when we come back, take a review of Big Zeke, and, of course, later on, SmackDown Review. Alright guys, here's Basic 13, Ezekiel Jackson. Uh, really great figure here. Almost 100% new parts. Uh, I believe the only new par parts that aren't new are uh, his boots, his hands, and the uh, scan is uh, just an upscale version of his original original scan. Uh, really good job here. I really like uh, the way they molded the body. It, it looks pretty much exactly like Zeke. Uh, I'm not sure if they did a full body scan on him. Uh, but the torso is really accurate. Uh, nice new giant arms. Got his tats on there. And uh, just a really great figure overall for a basic. I'd love to see this uh, converted to an elite. Uh, I also believe these giant knee pads are also uh, the Mark Henry Big Show knee pads. But overall, a great looking figure. Uh, a really great ad addition to any collection. Especially if you're a big Zeke fan or a Smackdown collector. Uh, he's been kind of on the down low, on the down push these days, but uh, you can still have this great figure of him, even if uh, 2012 isn't his year. Welcome back to Phil's Wrestling Show. Time for SmackDown Review. Alright, SmackDown from January, from February 3rd, 2012. Uh, I didn't get to take live notes during the show. Uh, these notes are from the rundown on 411mania.com. Um, Right off the top, uh, Teddy Long announced the Elimination Chamber for SmackDown would be uh, Daniel Bryan, of course, as the World Heavyweight Champion, uh, versus Wade Barrett, versus Big Show, versus Cody Rhodes, versus Mark Henry, versus Randy Orton. Uh, a pretty great lineup for the Elimination Chamber. Uh, should be a good one. Uh, Mark Henry came out off the top of the show uh, after uh, Henry, after Teddy Long announced the Elimination Chamber and uh, said he shouldn't be in the Chamber match. He wants a one-on-one -on -one championship match. And uh, eventually he put his hands on Teddy Long. And, of course, uh, Mark Henry gets suspended. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure this stems from last Friday's uh, SmackDown when Mark Henry took a dive... Uh, holding his knee uh, so it appeared that he did injure his knee in that match uh, he did work the rumble uh, but I'm pretty sure that's just because Mark Henry's a tough son of a bitch um, so I guess we're um, I hope Mark Henry is, doesn't miss Wrestlemania he put in a lot of great work uh, in the second half I mean, he's put in a lot of great work the last few years but his uh, run from last year uh, as world champion I really feel he should have a, a significant match at this year's Wrestlemania uh, like I said, I hope it does. I hope this injury doesn't keep him out till then. And I was sad to see him uh, get written off television. Uh, Cody, of course, uh, Sheamus and Cody came out afterwards. Uh, Sheamus helped uh, escort Mark Henry from the ring with a brogue kick. Uh, Cody Rhodes then came out. He had uh, a little warning for Sheamus to not let the success of winning the Royal Rumble go to his head. And in the long run, Cody feels he will be the one remembered for winning the Elimination Chamber and becoming uh, the first man to ever hold the World Heavyweight Championship and the Intercontinental Championship. Now, of course, he made reference to the Ultimate Warrior who held the WWE and Intercontinental, but 
if Cody w would pull this off, he would be the first man to be world heavyweight and intercontinental champion. Uh, this, of course, uh, anytime uh, two superstars who aren't in a match are in a ring and Teddy Long is there, guess fucking what? They're going to be in a match. And, of course, we got that match. It wasn't a bad match. I enjoyed it. Uh, Cody Rhodes definitely been on the rise uh, since the end of uh, Legacy. And uh, Sheamus is just pretty great all the way around. So they had a good little match there. Uh, Sheamus seems to be absorbing all of Finley's old moves. First with the cross off the shoulders into the front row, and now he took the Celtic Crunch to win the match. Uh, so hopefully he doesn't, bo uh, you know, forget all of his old moves that we all love. And uh, hopefully he's just adding to his repertoire with uh, Finley's old moves that... Um, now this was kind of like the never-ending um, segment. Uh, it started right through the whole show. Right, pretty much the first whole half hour was just all one continuous storyline. Uh, Cody stuck around after he lost to Sheamus as uh, Justin Gabriel tried to take on Unico, uh, but unfortunately it just became Unico Camacho Cody Rhodes beatdown on Justin Gabriel. They didn't even get to have a match. And uh, while that was weird on its own to see Cody Rhodes humping Hunico and Camacho, uh, great Kali, uh, one of my least favorite superstars of all time, uh, decides to come out and help Justin Gabriel. Now, last we seen Justin Gabriel, he was feuding with Cody Rhodes, but also helping Hornswoggle. So I'm really praying that we do not get a stable of Hornswoggle, great Kali, and Justin Gabriel. Because that's just fucking stupid. Like I said, that whole segment was just weird. And a after Sheamus and Cody, that whole segment was just bizarre. Um, and then, of course, backstage, we got a little bit. Uh, S Santino found a new tag team partner for this week. And uh, a few episodes, uh, back in episode two, I believe it was, I uh, said I was concerned that since Air Boom is no more, uh, I was concerned that Epico and Primo would not have s sufficient tag teams to face. And we're starting to see it now, because uh, Santino decided to drag Hacksaw Jim Duggan out as his new tag team partner, and they would be known as the team of Santine. Ho! And um, this is just uh, pretty much what I feared the most for the tag team division, is that uh, after Epico and Primo won the belts, and after Air Bloom is no more, uh, there's no more tag teams. Uh, I really don't understand why we can't have the Usos versus... Primo and Epico as a feud moving forward uh, because it, it would just make sense. Usos are a great team. They're good guys. Uh, they're not really, you know, overexposed. You know, they don't get too much time every week. So why not build those two teams up all the way through WrestleMania and let them have a match? Uh, all this Santino's rotating tag team partners while entertaining on one hand does not build a tag team division. Uh, we got some, uh, Michael Cole tried to come out and, uh, make things right with Daniel Bryan for all his time of shitting upon him. Uh, he congratulated Daniel Bryan for winning the triple threat match and wanted a handshake. Uh, I really wish Daniel Bryan would have kicked him right in the fucking face, but instead he told Cole that this was not about Michael Cole. Uh, pretty much refused to accept anything from Michael Cole. Then went on to, uh, say that Big Show does not deserve a match in the Elimination Chamber. And that, uh, Everyone should become vegan. Now, this, of course, reminded me of CM Punk's uh, Straight Edge Society storyline from a couple years back. But this has a slightly different twist on it because uh, this is not a, like an intimidation thing from Brian. Uh, and it doesn't have that dark edge like the uh, Straight Edge Society did. He's really just getting on people's nerves. Uh, I still like my uh, comparison from before that this is very uh, Kurt Angle like from Kurt Angle's original run. Uh, of course, Daniel Bryan's a, a bit more serious than that, uh, you know, not as, not as goofy as Kurt was at the time, and, uh, he's really making the most out of his cowardly championship reign, uh, while still maintaining the edge of being a great wrestler. And, uh, I really loved, after he got out of the ring with Big Show, uh, AJ, of course, came to his save before Daniel Bryan could get knocked the fuck out, and, uh, as he was hugging AJ, Daniel Ryan was just giving these snide little smiles to Big Show, like, you know you can't touch me with her around. It's 
so I really love how he's playing his character out to the fullest. Uh, then we got another, uh, as I discussed on the Raw review, I really don't think Beth Phoenix needs a storyline where she runs over people in under two minutes. Uh, it's kind of obvious she's the most dominant diva. You don't need to do the storyline to this extent. But we got it anyway as uh, Beth and Natalia faced uh, Tamina and Exana. Uh, I haven't seen too much of Exana's wrestling, but I'm pretty sure she's not that bad. Uh, so, as far as I'm concerned, this was a waste of all four people. Um, this match was actually over and done in like 45 seconds, and that's just just stupid. It's a waste. If you're going to have Beth do squashes, why don't you find some local female wrestlers and do it like Big Show style or something? Now you're wasting your own talents here, uh, being made to look like shit pretty much against Beth Phoenix. Um, I can kind of see that this is going for Karma versus Beth Phoenix, but I mean, you still need your divas to look somewhat reasonable, and it's just really a waste to see him used in matches like this, especially when you have Beth Phoenix, Natalia Neidhart, Tamina, are, are, they're already pretty established as good wrestlers, and Oksana's not even getting a chance to show, I couldn't tell you, uh, she had a good roll-up on Natty last week. You know, I'd love to see what she can actually do in a match. Uh, like I said, this was just a really sad waste of all four of those, uh, all four of those good divas. Now, of course, on the flip side of that, uh, our main event this week was the one and only Wide Barrett putting his bad barrage up against the Viper Randy Orton. Now, last week we got a non-match. Uh, they were supposed to have a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but. Because they started off things in a brawl, uh, the match never even got going, and uh, all the wrestlers that came out to break up the fight uh, ended up eating RKO's. So this week we actually got the actual no DQ match. Uh, another great performance from Barrett in a in a hardcore style match. Of course, a few weeks back on Sin City SmackDown had the great tables match with Sheamus. Uh, definitely go back and watch that one if you missed it. And uh, definitely, uh, if you didn't catch SmackDown this week, definitely catch. Wade Barrett versus Randy Orton uh, in the no DQ match. Great chair work. Uh, Randy Orton picked up the victory uh, with a second RKO right on the steel chair, uh, setting him up in a good position. And after that, we got a little segment where Teddy Long let Daniel Bryan know that he'll be facing Randy Orton next week on SmackDown. Uh, another accurate prediction by myself. Go back and watch last week's episode. I said that after Raw Rumble, uh, Daniel Bryan would most likely be moving on to work with Randy Orton, and I, for one, personally can't wait to see that one, because I know Randy Orton loves working with wrestlers like that. Uh, he, he had great matches with CM Punk last year, and uh, I think it, we're in for more of the same with him and Daniel Bryan. Uh, of course, uh, Randy Orton always works well with guys smaller than him. Uh, last year, probably... Uh, Wrestling-wise, the feud of the year was Christian and Randy Orton, and I think we're in for similar things like this. Uh, uh, speaking of Christian, I'm wondering where he is. I really love to see Captain Charisma come back. He is another one of my favorite guys, but uh, that's another story for another time. Uh, overall, really good episode of SmackDown this week. Uh, overall, uh, great week in wrestling, uh, from the Rumble to SmackDown. Uh, pretty much all good. Uh, Cena's video was played this week on SmackDown. Uh, I think that plays better to the SmackDown fan, just like the Raw, uh, the Rock's video on Raw plays more towards the Raw viewership. Um, so, definitely a good week in wrestling. Definitely good to see the road to WrestleMania starting to build here, brick by brick. And uh, I'm really looking forward to Orton vs. Bryan next week on SmackDown. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning into the show this week. Uh, let me get all my plugs in. Uh, like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my eBay. Uh, check out my other channel, PWS Action Figures, for all my action figure Titantron needs. And uh, I'll see you guys next week on PWS, Phil's Wrestling Show. <laughs>